Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Okay, welcome back everyone. You are watching theCUBE here live in Las Vegas for EMC World 2015. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and they extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier here with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Blake Smith, S Systems Director, Enterprise Infrastructure, Christus Health, Christ US. I said earlier, but it's a Christian-based Christus Health. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you. So tell us about what's, what you guys are, what you're doing, and so, some of the tech that so you're rolling out. We are a uh, integrated delivery network. We have about 25 uh, hospitals and about 150 clinics, as well as a health plan. Uh, based in Texas, we also have international facilities in Chile and um, Nec New or in Mexico, and we are living the life with healthcare IT. So, what's it like? I mean, healthcare is the biggest opportunity right now um, for for companies that are saying to make money. Obviously, you know, we hear all the time, "Oh, that's a big upside." But actually, from a tech perspective, there's some refresh going on, some regulations appear to give us the current. Reader's Digest of like <laughs> the top line points of where the opportunities are for disruption and innovation. Yeah, I think uh, it, our, the cost is being driven down by the business. There's, there's a, uh, really to, to the keynote this morning, they want speed and agility out of the business, but they want the infrastructure costs to drop. And that is providing all kinds of opportunities and disruptors and adding cloud services and cloud service providers, both internal and starting to explore external, which is a reg regulatory nightmare for us. Is there an appetite for cloud? <laughs> or is it like we have to go there eventually? There's a, there's a business appetite for the cloud because they think that it's faster and easier. Uh, there is a absolutely regulatory fear of the cloud due to the loss of control of the data. Well, let's talk about that. What is the biggest challenge right now, technically, on the data stuff? And what do you see as an opportunity from a solutions standpoint to deal with that? I think one of the biggest challenges with the data is ensuring that, uh, the, that you can encrypt it in the cloud, that you own it, and you can extract it as necessary if you have a cloud service provider. Many times the contracts are not very clear on that. So, talk about healthcare, the, the, the business. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting to note you've got overseas facilities, mm -hmm. which I think is somewhat rare, isn't it? I mean, it's rare in healthcare in the U.S. Yeah, yes. we're one of the few international providers. Yeah, so that's so you only have you not only have to deal with U.S. regulations, mm -hmm. but you got to figure out what's going on. And you said Chile and Mexico, Chile right? And Mexico, which yeah. probably have different set of regulations different set as well. Of regulations. In the U.S., you got Affordable Care Act, aka Obamacare. You got meaningful use. Yep. Uh, so you've got to show adoption of technology. Mm -hmm. It's got to be real. You want it to be real because yep. it drives productivity. So talk about that dynamic, and maybe how that differs from the folks in overseas. <laughs> um, interestingly, we keep our overseas data separate. Uh, that has a lot to do with the Patriot Act and the, some of the disclosures we might be required to perform for the government, and because it's healthcare and protected health information, we want to keep that, data, keep that data separate at this time. In terms of the adoption, the Affordable Care Act, and uh, just the Obamacare in general, uh, it is adding a significant cost to our delivery, um, but it's also provided opportunities for us to get into big data and provide things that we haven't been able to provide to the business before, because once you make that investment, it op the, the playing field's huge. So do you have a uh, chief data officer? We do not yet, but that position is being investigated. Oh, okay, I mean, it's not uncommon for healthcare yeah. to be one of the But it's being discussed, it's, it's a conversation. Talk about the um, consolidation of data centers, because the cloud obviously is an op economic benefit, but at the same time, consolidation doesn't mean reduce costs and not invest. So talk about the, as you consolidate the data centers, what are the dynamics for actually continuing to invest in, in, a, in a data modeling, data backup? So we, we have, um, in, the, in the last four years, we've closed over six data centers. We've consolidated out of multiple regions into our two primary facilities and that has produced a huge capital savings, but it's also allowed us to re reinvest in basically internal or private cloud technologies. So we have a very robust 95% virtual infrastructure uh, that's fully replicated with SRM to our backup data center. So you guys like to stand there one day and say, oh, we're going to consolidate all these data centers and like, then what? Or was it more of you thought it through saying, okay, if we do this, we have to have a hit the ground running plan. And could you take us through the mindset yeah. of what, what was the conversation then? Um, Really, the plan 
was produced initially out of a capital refresh plan. Mm -hmm. When we looked at the cost of running the remote data centers, the cost we were providing uh, services there, we were actually in colo facilities where we were paying monthly rent. And from that really grew a plan to build a private cloud and consolidate to our uh, central data centers. And was virtualization a key part of that? It was a key part of virtual, it. Virtual four four years ago we were 30% virtual. And then how did that affect your data protection strategy when you went into the virtualization? Totally changed our data protection Can you talk strategy. about that a little Absolutely. bit? Absolutely. Uh, we were traditional tape backup with 10 year old tape libraries four years ago. Um, we were backing up um, hundreds and hundreds of tapes and ejecting them and sending them off to tape vaults that we were maintaining in these remote data facilities. And we'd have runners yeah. that would yeah. you know, take the tapes to those locations <laughs> and lock yeah, them up. A, and that was popular, yeah. right? Here's the best part. <laughs> and when a hurricane come, would, would be coming to South Texas, we'd get someone to take those tapes, put them in a car, and drive ahead of the hurricane to the recovery site. That was our plan. That was your, your backup yeah. and recovery system. That was our a, a driver. recovery plan. Put someone out there in harm's way and hope he makes it through. So it was not popular, all this manual no. work involved. No. Um, what did you guys do so technically? We, was there yeah, automation we, involved? We took two steps. Uh, the first is we uh, put a virtual infrastructure in our remote data centers. Uh, we actually added data domains into those remote data centers and began <laughs> replicating that virtual infrastructure back to the San Antonio data center so that we could use that as a recovery and eliminated the tape backups in the regions. No no tape? No tape in the regions. Not even for, oh, okay. But we, have, we have one tape library left, and that's maybe not after the 9500 was released today, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the goal is actually to eliminate. To eliminate tape. Uh, yeah. All tape, e even as a last resort, no yep. tape. Um, and then, what changed in terms of, well, how did it change your, your operations? Talk about any, any results. Uh, um, operations changed significantly. Our availability went up. Um, one of our, our primary systems, which was running like a 98% availability after it was 100% virtualized, we've been running at 99.99 or better for over two years. Uh, the largest change we did to our uh, tier one protection strategy differences is we used to use SRDF replication between four different uh, VMAX systems. We actually reduced that to two, we went to recover point, and now we do continuous data protection of that primary or tier one applications, and then with the addition of Site Recovery Manager, we just did something we've never been able to do before. We brought up and are still running a complete copy of our tier one uh, application, Meditech, which is our primary hospital information system. So we're doing ICD-10 testing or, or billing testing in that live environment, or that copy of a live environment. Uh, we've yeah. been doing that for about two months. That's so that's a recovery we, site. That's on a recovery site. And you can site. test that recovery mm -hmm. site now, so you couldn't yeah. test before. Yeah, we, we've never, we, we'd tested before, but it was always kind of a circumstantial, we brought it up, we could prove that we could log into it, but we never did transaction work. We're actually doing transactional work. Right. And it was too much effort. And it, v, was VMware the virtualization? Yes, yes VMware's VMware. And, virtual platform. And, and so, in your RPO and RTO obviously were, affected. Oh yes, with the, 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 original, data the original RPO uh, was uh, 12 hours and the RTO was 24. Uh, the test we just performed, uh, the RPO was two hours and we the RTO was four hours. And you're taking, so you're taking snapshots how frequently every? We are, t we're doing uh, local data protection with RecoverPoint and remote data protection. So we're going to change the snapshots, but at the time, um, Meditech didn't support them. You guys happy with RecoverPoint, it worked for you? It's worked much better than we thought. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, we were a little skeptical. It's a lot of data with high transaction. Until you really put it into production, you don't know. <laughs> was it skeptical as in yeah. fingers crossed, or was EMC like on the on uh, supporting was, you guys? It, oh, absolutely, EMC has been great. But we were kind of bleeding edge. We were one yeah. of the largest customers for Meditech to ever. So everyone, everyone was happy then. <laughs> so it did work. I mean, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my approach. <laughs> and you're doing, yeah, right. Pray, pray some more. And, and you're using V Vplex as well? How are yes, you using we do have Vplex? Uh, we have Vplex. We originally purchased Vplex because we were hoping to do Active Active. Right. Uh, Meditech hasn't you know, released support for that. So what we did, what we've done with it is we've totally virtualized our storage infrastructure in our primary data center. And uh, with that, we're using Vplex to split the data for uh, SRM. And so that's all of our primary VMC drives and your, your standard data stores are all uh, replicated through RecoverPoint using Vplex. So you have a lot of EMC products. We do. I think we probably have every EMC product they've made. Really? You know, a few that you got a yeah. VNXE? I don't, but I have four VNXs. <laughs> I'm just trying have. to stump you. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Guy Churchwood talk about it. Stephen Manley was on talking about it. We had some of the product guys. So from your standpoint, you've got a lot of different products. How are they being integrated? And what do you like about what's going on? What could EMC do better? That is absolutely the hardest challenge we have facing us right now. Um, we have all these products, they're all at a different release cycle, um, upgrade cycle, uh, performance cycle. We are, we are struggling with bringing all of those technologies to full use, uh, you know, if you will, that full perfect private cloud. Uh, we're very interested in the EMC um, uh, cloud infrastructure offering that 28 days to bring all those tools up to a fully functional are you using converged infrastructure, V-Blocks at all, or? We are not, we have built our own V-Blocks, you, you, Yeah, you, okay, yeah. so you've uh, done that in-house. Yeah. On, on uh, somebody, which servers are you using? Uh, it's, uh, UCS. So, okay, so you got UCS, yeah. so essentially. We have 248 UCS blades running our wow. VMware infrastructure. So what, looking forward, what are the big things on your agenda that you can talk uh, about? Micro-segmentation for the network, NSX, um, getting to that truly uh, fully deployed cloud infrastructure with self-provisioning, uh, Vipers on that path list. Really? Um, mm -hmm. in, the, in the data protection, we want to expand our testing of Site Recovery Manager to the entire site. Uh, most importantly, we, we probably are going to refresh, well we know, I think we can, we can say it, my EMC rep knows, we're, we're going to refresh our VMAXs with um, Extreme IOs and then start replicating with Extreme I.O. technology. So no no Extreme I.O. in there today. We have two Extreme I.O. Uh, bricks, or two four brick Extreme I.O. Take a little there. taste of that and you like it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got it for the VDI VD environment, worked great. Oh, right, okay. Uh, now we're really just pushing all our SQL lo server loads over there and, and uh, actually we pushed all of our uh, C drives for our Metatech over there to reduce our patch window. So we can now reboot uh, a thousand Meditech servers in 15 minutes. The application's down for 15 minutes a month for patching. Great. Well, Blake, great to have you on theCUBE. I want to ask you one final question. What's the big learnings that were magnified out of this process? Obviously, huge task. I mean, your old process was, a lot of people go through that. There's a lot of manual work, and certainly sending runners in front of hurricanes and, and putting them in harm's way is a great, it highlights the, the critical nature of, yeah. of, of how this is uh, you know, part of the operations. What did you learn the most out of this? What, what taught you about this exercise, this transformation? You did a lot of work. You consolidated, you virtualized, you changed your workflow, mm -hmm. and I, now you're, you're kicking butt and taking names. So what's, yeah. what's I, the big magnification? I, I think we learned, because uh, we had some struggles along the way. Uh, we've learned you've got to have a strong partner. You're, in, in this case, EMC and VMware have to be strong partners at the table with you. Um, and also, in, and I'm not the person, but I wish my team was here, you got to hire champions, and you got to put champions in the roles to do their job the best they can. Yeah, you mean internally to your internally, group? Internally, internally yeah. to your group. And internally. advice for folks out there looking at the same road ahead <laughs> that you had, <laughs> what would you, what scar tissue can you share? And Pray. What, you know, what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pray and hire experts. <laughs> okay, Blake, thanks for coming. Blake Smith here inside theCUBE sharing about his journey with uh, Recover point, all the transformation from tape into automation, getting cloud ready, virtualization, state of the art in an important area. Of course, it's theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>